Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the Summer Open Premier Qualifiers. My name is Randy or Evan Rainer. This is Nick Keo, high risk pretty hair. We're excited to be getting into the finals for today. There's a lot of great action that's happened already. We've seen pentakills, quadra kills, we've seen close games, we've seen blowouts. But right now it's the opportunity to see the two best teams in North America over the history of the last year compete against each other and one under a new name. That's right, guys. And if you're a new Paladins and you want to compete as well, we have a cool new thing coming up for you. If you're playing on console as well, you don't really have that mouse and keyboard locked down. You can be a warrior on the sticks as Paladins has just gone into open beta on both Xbox One and PS4. Completely free to play, so just hop into the respective stores and download it and play for yourself. And if you get good, you get a couple of guys that you want to play with or a couple of girls, however you want to do it, or you want to mix them whatever you want, you're going to be able to take part in the console wars. The qualifying for that starts May 20th, and that goes all the way to June 25th. $50,000 prize pool will take place in Spain at DreamHack Valencia for four teams, top two teams in both North America and EU. And that'll be alongside our PC tournament that we'll be doing there as well. That is the summer premiere at DreamHack Valencia. You can see the breakdown of the format right here. And we are already in week number two of the open bracket. We're gonna pick four teams at the top of the crop here from the open bracket, put them into a three week round robin, and then take the top two from that section and put them in Spain. It's gonna be an exciting venture, an exciting trip. Uh, and I can't wait to get there. But right now these teams are fighting to get to that round robin stage we mentioned about. It's the second week, and we've already seen both of these teams have some ups and downs. Astro Authority winners of last week. Denial, yeah. not even in the semifinals. So lost they have early. to go big. So they've got to go big, or, or really, it might be go home. Yeah, have to see here. It's going to be Bright Marsh again. So it feels like every series kicking it off here on the Bright Marsh. Astro Authority, known for their kind of wacky drafts, but Denial proving that they might take that title away from them soon here with the first pick. They are going to go for the Androxus. I don't mind it. I think the Nile need to feel confident. The Lex wasn't what they wanted when Stolze played it, although he was able to save the day, do some heroics yeah. at the end. This wasn't overall very consistently good for them. But the Androxus, he's feeling himself after that set he just played. So Astro Authority taking their time with their response picks will still be the Ruckus prioritized. Oh, it's still on the table if they want it. Uh, but Astro Authority and Nile both pretty heavily prioritizing uh, I think the Torvald is their secondary tank. And I think these teams may be looking a little to the future where the Makoa hook is now uh, a little bit nerfed. And that's something that these teams and a lot of the community has been talking about. What will that look like? But taking him nonetheless, if he's open, second. And that's just speaking to the strength and how competitive kind of works. At some point in time, no matter how strong something is, the meta will just shift around it. Yeah. You know, Makoa hook, it is what it is, but teams are going to figure out how to play around it. It's going to lose value slowly over time, just as the Bomb King kind of did during the Masters land. I mean, yeah. as teams were starting to figure it out, saw, you know, District 69 beat it multiple times during the finals. Yes, and this is important, too, to get your strategies ready for what you will do without maybe Makoa being that first pick. It already started. These two teams are trendsetters, especially Astral Authority. They're taking the Croc away, which is something that Niall and Bidey and that squad have been loving uh, for a long time now. So when Drox is bucked, the death squad that can dive very deep especially when supplemented by that Torvald protection it's a very strong combo and shady shades won't have to look after himself too much he will be receiving some of those bubbles no. i am sure anara wow covered in snap locked in big time this is this is what this is this is the pick i mean this is anara against two flankers sure and, and you know what? One of the best things about Anara in this room is that she can actually lock off a complete entrance. So that front entrance, she can force you to the side, or she can lock off the side where a lot of people like to flank. She give can, complete yeah. uh, ease and just relaxation to her teammates inside. Wall off one and then go drop your F on the other, and you've got, you know, half that room locked down. We'll have to see how Denial respond to the Anara pick. It will be field study. Four Vault, four Mighty with a Kronos. Half Shell, four Wiffles, Makoa. Bounce House, four Shady Shades, Buck. Dark Stalker for Stolzies, Androxus, and a Ripen Gord for Arise, Maldamba. Dosip's playing Accelerant, Bomb King, Evil Eye on the Flux, Generator, Ruckus, Cus Cutie on Architectonics, Barrack, Totemic Ward, Grok for Vex 30, and Wardroom on Mother's Grace, Inara. She's going to take Master Riding, try to get to that point in the, in the room where she can put her wall up and try to really create some safe havens for her teammates. She's just gonna use that CC immune totem as well. 
There's the Makoa. Doesn't go for the snag just yet. Doesn't separate anyone, doesn't split anyone up, but a wall nonetheless. Buying some decent time here for Astral Authority. Dropping the Warder's Field, slowing down this turtle. First blood's gonna go to Astral Authority, but quickly answered back by Souls. And that's 33% that they got as a result of that wall. It's not de up yet again, which is something that, you know, we'll see not necessarily an EU if they pick up. They love the uh, tri they love the impasse there. They love being able to get the extra wall cooldown because then in that situation you could have it up yet again. But right now, Wardoom is controlling this space. That's what they went for with this lineup, and it is working to perfection. Astral Authority, 99%, looking to capture this first objective and over Denial. This is a really good, you know, transition pivot in the draft from Astral Authority because Denial Esports have nothing to punish this clumping from Astral Authority. You're looking at bucking and drop as the main sources of your damage. Unless Makoa can pull somebody out, which is going to be very hard to do, and probably won't even result in a kill most of the time, just due to the tanky nature of everyone on this Astro Authority squad. You're looking at a Ghost Walk, immediate Poppy Bombs out, and Nara just too tanky to kill off the back of a Dredge Anchor. Yeah. It's going to be tough for Denial to pull this off. And the walls that Inara is going to be able to bring, not only creating space uh, for the payload to move, but also just creating opportunities to actually capture these close objective fights much easier because she's creating that type of barrier for her teammates. Two kills for Solzy in the air, and he's trying to find a third, and this will prove to be a full team wipe, it seems like. And uh, he's trying to take advantage of it. Three kills for Stolze in this engagement. But that's what it's going to take from Denial. It's going to take those ultimates. And if Astro Authority go into things like Resilience, you know, that Dread Serpent is not going to get the value that we just saw it get. The Accursed Arm is probably not going to get the value that it just got. If once that look happens once, you're going to look at communicated repulsor fields coming out from this ruckus just to mitigate and cut the legs and the bite out of that ultimate. I mean, you just got to, I, I, there's so many different things that can happen here. A lot of things I want to talk about, oh. but one of the most impactful things that just happened there is the wall. War Doom cut off two members of Denial Esports as they were aggressively zoning. He cut them off from their team, so it became instead of a 5v5, can be a 2 V4 Jeez. for their team, and that's an incredible stun there. <laughs> she just goes in right now. Wardoom with Inara dominating on Bright Marsh. Let's take a little bit of a look at Inara's loadout here that Wardoom is running. It has been you know, so infrequently that we do get to see her. Sticking with what he ran last time, so just as much effective HP in a fight as he can possibly get. Steadfast 4 for 600 HP, as well as Stone Bulwark 4 for 120 health per second during his Earth and Guard, and a little cooldown action there for his Earth and Guard as well. It's kind of the meat and potatoes of the sort of play style that Wardoom is going for. He's being so hard to bring down, and that's only going to be amplified by the changes coming through to Inara in the next patch. Now when the healing, uh, the anti-healing gets through, that could be a problem, but they don't really have a lot. They've just got one, two cauterized ones on their team. The really important thing is if Denial was able to shut down some of the healing, they could have had an advantage taking away, you know, what little Grok was providing. But now it just seems like they don't have any opportunities to really break through this room. Look, they're just rotating around looking for something, anything. They will find the snap onto Dosips there. He is the squishiest, most easy to kill target there. And Buckwild, a lot of ultimates coming out from Denial, but there's a big Hexafire ripping through these HP pools. One kill, two kill. Evil Eye with good positioning on the rest of this fight cleans up another. I mean, it's the Flux Generator as well. 60% damage reduction in tandem with Inara's 50% damage reduction. It's 110% effectively, uh, you know, in theory. It's not effective because there are diminishing returns there, but she's almost unkillable, especially with the self-healing coming up and the limited amounts of Conorize. This is Astral Authority's game right now. 3-0, and she will finally, it looks like, take her first death. Yeah, but not before that triple kill and that final engagement there. Wardoom sporting Inara has been, you know, buffed over time. Her damage fall off has been incredibly increased over the course of the last couple of patches. A lot of low members here to be cleaned up. Dosups going to find one. Evil Eye does take down Shady Shades, ripping damage into these two tanks. Ancient Rage has been popped just to try and survive, but eating so much damage. He's going to get the Shell Shield up for the time being, but one more well-placed bomb from Dosips and a spray <laughs> to send Whiffle on his way. Next patch will be able to get the Get Wrecked spray, which I'm so excited about because that would have been very appropriate. Doesn't even look after he throws the bomb, just detonates, knows it gets the kill, and then heads on back to battle here. Dosips, another big reason why this team is winning so effectively. I mean, it's 3-0, could be 4-0 in just a moment. He's got a King Bomb ready. They may not even need it, though. Two AoE stuns on the side of Astral Authority. 
Feels like they're getting so much value. A lot of damage coming into Wardoom right now from Stolzi's Androx. It's getting free headshots, what it feels like. Nice Seismic Crass, beautiful trajectory as well to find the stun, even though it was up onto the high ground. Dosips is a big problem right now for Denial. Shady Shade's able to take him down. Can he swing the fight on his own? Evil Eyes got his Hexafire now. He's going to use it just to zone out. Finds one kill. Will he find the Torvald? It surely seems like it will happen. And there goes the granddaddy of the realm. He's going to head back, take a long nap, and Astral Authority will come away with a victory, a convincing victory on Bright Marsh. And that's the benefit of these two teams, how flexible they are in the draft. Yeah. I was going to pull out some weird stuff on you. Astral Authority is the team to just out-weird you and just put you <laughs> in a position that you don't know how to, to deal it. with. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. I mean, they, they are both known for doing some interesting things, but there is nobody more interesting, it feels like, in the draft than Astro Authority. And you know what? To me, this was a great showcase of Inara. Wasn't necessarily, I think, the Inara show, although he talked about her a lot. I think it was really more of the Astro Authority draft show. The, uh, yeah. And locking in denials, maybe, you know, maybe weakness here in, in picking great drafts all the time. The early Androxus pick, and uh, I think they picked Buck third. Um, it kind of leaves you susceptible to that. In Astro Authority, they already picked up two tanks. They say, hey, well, we got what it takes to take a third. Wardroom can play it. Evil Eye can play at Cuscuti. It's just the flexibility in this roster allows them to do stuff like this. And the Totemic Ward Grok is another great answer. Just give him a Koa, and we'll just try to keep this totem up as much as possible and render that dredge anchor ineffective. Yeah, I mean, Evil Eye and Dosip's carrying the damage for that team where you didn't really have anyone to, to follow suit and fulfill that role on the side of denial. That's the real big thing missing. That's the weakness of flankers. They just can't penetrate that just death ball that three tanks yeah barrack and nara are going to create with the ruckus repulsor field as well they had nothing to break it up with they get 4 0 very quickly we're going to be moving on to game number two here in jaguar falls the draft has been weird so far in north america we'll see if it keeps up here astro authority with the first pick you know i wouldn't have minded in that last game a, a drogos or a willow i think it could have been okay because they've got great point busting capabilities with some of their their fire spits with a combustible legendary choice or just a general or they've also got just the raw damage coming out from the seedling and things like that the dead zone to really be able to mitigate some of that shielding uh but it just <laughs> you know well wasn't wasn't something that they thought was necessary in many ways maybe they got baited into taking makoa because he was just available yeah, just figuring it out it seems here tonight we'll take the makoa though the ruckus for astral authority will be the first pick him in his smug mug here. It is actually Frog Isle. I apologize, did misspeak earlier. We're both locked in yep. alongside the Makoa. So Astro Authority. Did they go for I don't know about Barak and Nara on this map in particular, as it yeah. is much more open. Uh, but nonetheless, gonna pull out the Grok against I guess maybe that's their answer against Dredge Anchor. Yeah. This is where it's really, really imperative to understand the different champions have different uh, win rates and different success rates uh, on different maps and that is very important to understand and Nara will do well in the bright marshes the Jaguar Falls maybe even the frozen guards a little bit tighter space where you're fighting more consistently Frog Isle terrible in terms of she's so susceptible to a lot of the damage from a lot of different areas that her skills are less valued and up a pip as well so another big you know, commit here to crowd control. You're looking at Red Janker, you're looking at Hyper Beam. There it is. You're looking at an evil Mojo as well. They will have the Drogos to punish the clumping this time around. But the Pip, again, the big opportunity to just whiff here if the Totemic Ward comes down in time. And Pip with his vocal cue and that he is firing his ultimate. Let's make things interesting. Uh, I wouldn't put it past the ride and not have the reaction time to just snap that totem down. No, absolutely not. And you kind of know where and when Pip might want to do it. So uh, if Denial does go with you know, Pip trying to really turn these tides of the fight with that ultimate, he's going to maybe have to do it at a odd time. Maybe a solo ult. Maybe get somebody important out of the fight here. Astro Authority with a pretty decent lineup. Denali Sports looking a little more, uh, a little bit more coverage there. Insurance yeah. coverage uh, <laughs> on all the types of damage that they're going to need. Stronger draft all around, I think, uh, for Denial. Astro Authority, though, getting a lot of what I think they're comfortable with. As well, Evil Eye back on his ruck, because I don't know that he's played anything. He played Drogos once, I believe, on Search and Peace, but he's been pretty consistent here on the ruckus today. Accelerant for Dosup's Bomb King Cuscuti, yet to select his legendary Architect Tonics for War Doom's Barrack. Darkstalker will be the choice for Cuscuti. Uh, Flux Trainer for Evil Eye's Ruckus and a Totemic Ward for Vex's Grok.
Wi-Fi will be on a half shell. Makoa, Stolze on combustible. Drogos, Arai on a mega potion. Pip, something Astral Authority has loved before. Now Denial's using Shady Shades, Exaction, Cassie, and Bitey. He's on Field Study, Torval. Couple of item picks coming out right out of the gate here will be the double cauterize with one wrecker. Uh, one cauterize with a double wrecker is the selection for uh, Astral Authority. Torvald will demand a little bit more of that shield killing potential, so understandable with the switch up here. But other than that, Master Riding Kronos is for the tanks. Wi-Fi looking to find a hook. Could have absolutely done it through Cus Cutie's reversal. That hook goes through it, but Cus Cutie gonna escape. He's gonna grab Wardoom hey. instead. A much juicier target, we'll first it. blood. Looking real good for Denial here as they try to find more. Dozips on the back foot, gets to the upper ground, but Shady Shades hunts him down. The Hunter's Daughter finds some prey. So after a few seconds of reprieve there from the Totemic Ward, it was a very easy team fight to clean up for Denial Esports. A couple clutch hooks there. It was just good damage consistently coming from the back line there. There's a big fire spit from Stolz. He's gonna connect onto three. Already 89 now, north of 90% on his ultimate. Oh, this is incredible stuff here by Stolz. He's gonna have another fire spit right now if he elects to use it, but he's getting taken down by Dosips, but turns yeah, around, potion. Stolz, he gets the kill. Double kill, hits a three with a combustible. Try to find a third. Great ghost walk by Grok, but it will not be immune long enough. The dragon punch, cool. Down uh, doesn't go on, and he finishes off the fight with a triple kill and a successful point capture for Denial Esports. There's a fire spit as well. We'll connect onto one, knocking Ruckus back even further. 13% already regained back on that Dragon Punch. Huge momentum swing there. Stolze carrying the bulk of that team fight. Combustible so good on Frog Isle. There's so much clumping, and it really teaches these teams who love clumping. I mean, they're, they're in the mindset of clumping after that Bright Marsh game, and now they're going to get punished for it every single time. Cus Cutie, though, takes Solzy's favorite god and uses it against him. Former teammates as well battling against one another, and uh, this could be a good sign. Cus Headshot two in a row. Good Master snowball Authority. this fight off the back of that one pick as well. Two more targets low in the back line. Stolze has returned to the fray for the time being. Don't want to get too overextended here. Actually, a lot of damage being dumped in from afar by Pip and by Cassie. That's Cus Cutie uh, just realizing that he got hit with the combustible right there. That's the power of it. Cus Cutie's outplaying a lot of people here, but one combustible puts him into the danger zone. One shot from Shady Shades Cassie, one Dro Drogo's rocket launcher, and uh, he's going downtown, back to base. They can't afford to lose him anymore. Totemic Ward, Grox Totem will stay there, heal them up, give him CC immunity. Grumpy Bomb goes down, but now Dosips, he may fall here. Poppy Bomb's a bunch up and in the air. Vex hits a decent sized chicken, though. Uh, Arai, excuse me, hitting that chicken. We'll be able to clean up one off the back of it. Shady Shades trading out two for one right now in favor of Astral Authority. Wow, they're not looking at Shades. They don't give a they don't give a, a crap about seeing him anywhere. He's just gonna walk off. They know they've actually seriously completed this push, this defense, and uh, they're not going anywhere. So Denali Sports, they're content with this hold. Astral Authority content with this hold as well. Both teams just call it a stalemate. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty strange too, given that it was just a two for one. That's only three members out of the 10 total playing the game. Yeah, uh, that dive. Shady Shades maybe getting split up from the team fight. They considered him dead as well, just holding the jump off. We'll get another try here. Have 30 seconds. But still a long way to go. Cus Cutie again finding an angle on Stolze from long range. Not a lot of poke pressure from Combustible late in this push. So they may have just wasted an opportunity to go 2-0 up here. Losing Stolze now is bad, but if they can find one big pick, it could change things. Wi-Fi almost gets the hook off the ledge. Cus Cutie goes into a danger zone, but so far looking good. Here's a big Combustible. That's going to knock, Rock knock Rockus away but the defense is successful, nevertheless. Astral Authority does manage to get that Dragon Punch charged up and almost ready to go once again. Arai is on that evil mojo. He's doing a decent job keeping his whole team cleaned up. I'd be curious to see, this is like, I think the first game in forever we haven't seen Ying or Maldamba. So let's take a look at the healing charts and see how Pip and Grok are managing to stack up against each other. And it is the Grok. Uh, but just barely, right. I think, is the thing here. And there is a lot of communication. Astral Authority are very good at grouping up to receive their healing as they have kind of coined this Mega Potion Pit. But Arai and Denial show that they have what it takes to run the wonky, you know, second tier healers as well. Yeah, and, and these two healers, they require grouping up to really take advantage of that healing. So it leads really well into Stolze's play style. Denial's uh, kind of 
overarching strategy of getting this combustible Drogos off. He's got a Dragon Punch here. He did the same thing before on this exact spot. Got a lot of damage off. Now he's going to try to find one. Finding a little fire. Will he be able to get the Barrack? He will. He'll go down for it. So a one-to-one -one trade may not be what he looked for. King Bomb roots him in place and Dosips falls as well. Doesn't get it off, so will retain that ultimate if he can manage to get himself back into this fight, but a big roll through. Shady Shades finds a double. Wi-Fi shuts down Stolze, or Cus Cutie as well. Ancient Rage going to be expended for that. 42% already on the point. And a lot of good ultimates here from Denial. Hyper Beam and Evil Mojo to dissuade the take back from Astral Authority. There's a lot of pressure happening. 3% at a time now. Denial Esports knows that Astral's got to make a move and quick. Cus Cutie goes to the back line. Really good job of just moving everyone's eyes to the left. And that spacing could really help. He's going to stun out Torvald Doseps. However, is real low and Stolze will find him. Wardoom, the tank alive because Bidey and Wi-Fi have all finished off. But Arai carries a little bit of weight on his own and gets a kill on to Cus. Cutie. 51% though for Astral. They may be able to reposition and re-engage with an Evil Mojo. CC Immunity Totem is down. This is the time to pop the Evil Mojo. And with Wi-Fi coming back, I expect this is when we are likely to see it. X is positioning for it. Here comes the ultimate starting to come through. Dome Shield is on the ground. Oh. Hyper Beam comes out. Bitey looking for a double kill. He's going to find it. That's big time there. The ultimate's just paying dividends and uh, really going into the bank here, into the pockets, into the drink. Two members. For Bidey, he will uh, make sure Denial Esports take a 2-1 lead here on Frog Isle. It really came down to just a better ultimate at the right time. Yeah, not a whole lot of value gain from that King Bomb. It ran into Torvald's shield. Only does 2,500 damage, so that's only half of Torvald's total HP on his shield. Dosips needs to find more with those King Bombs next time around. Exalted Androxus. Worn by Cus Cutie, sporting one of the newer skins He's for out of this god. But he is uh, absolutely in a little bit of an issue there. A combustible shot from Drogos could have finished it off. A great bubble there to keep him alive, not to do the extra damage. It already does 100%. He doesn't have a combustible right now, but a fire spit will be coming. And that's going to hit two, three, oh, three members and the totem. One more. Stolze can't find it long range. It doesn't matter, he's got the range for his team. They push this payload and are almost ready to convert. And now could find a lot of damage. A lot of members are coming out of spawn right now. Fire Spit will connect. Only onto one member, a turret and a shield, however. But it could be enough here. Cus Cutie getting very aggressive, gets taken down again. And this is big, Shady Shade's still alive. And this is what we talk about. This is the Sheepa factor. This is the, you're not really paying attention to him, but he's on a 13 streak and you try and kill him, but he just outplays you in that moment and he stays alive. Wi-Fi with a double. Solzy and Rai pick some up for themselves. And Shady Shades on a 14 streak allow Denial Esports to take a 3-1 lead over Astral. Looking to just tie up the series with this win here on Frog Isle. Items are relatively equal as we see the Cus Cutie picking up Cauterize 2. He's about 300 credits off his Cauterize 3. Denial Esports, however, they've got caught three online for two members who are very easy to confirm that debuff in Shady Shades, Cassie, and Arise Pip. So healing is going to be a big issue this round for Astral Authority. Can Vex continue to keep up? Willie? Will he not? That's the big question here. This round just... I mean, Fire asks, Spit killing the totem. Is, it, it that's asks, rough. It asks a lot of questions of everyone. I mean, this is really where you come to play. Stolze showed up in the fourth quarter last time. Will he show up again, or will it be Gus Cutie? Will it be Dosips? Bomb King, Androx is both a lot of damage for their squad that they're counting on. Shady Shades trying to find one shot onto one. There's a King Bomb. He actually rolls into it, so he'll slay Stolze. Gus Cutie will slay Bidey. Wardoom will slay Arai, and they will get almost everything off of that King King Bomb Ultimate and the pressure it applied. And with a flick of his wrist, Cus Cutie looking for a couple more kills, but just whiffing a lot of shots here. Unable to find either of those low targets uh, from Denial Esports, but that is the King Bomb we need to see from Dosips to be able to win these team fights. There's a Dragon Punch coming around the corner, but Astro Authority have already come away with the payload, so Stolze Ooh. trades his life for nothing. Thought he might be able to get there. It had to be a reactionary choice. He couldn't decide fast enough and unfortunately just can't get to the payload, to the objective, pardon me, and really contest there. So it will be Astral Authority, thanks to the comeback mechanic you do mention quite often, uh, giving them some extra capture charge and keeping them in this fight. Shady Shades being the recipient of the past two healing potions and a Torvald couple. He's going to get four health bars to take down Cus Cutie. Finally gets the frag there. Wardoom does take down Bitey. Skunking this defense ever so slightly. Arise going to heal everyone back up with a nice mega potion. But 
really on the back foot right now. He's waylisting out, trying to stay alive, and he will. Very, very good place there by Arai. Heads up, positioning, and he's still here. Evil Eye will shut down Shady Shades, take him down, and so Astral Authority finding a little bit of rhythm. They might tie this up. A good push seems to be in the progress of being made. A minute and 25 seconds left on the timer. Hyper Beam here by Bidey could really shut this down. Yeah, unless the totem comes down with perfect timing and precision, this Hyper Beam is a massive, massive threat right now to Denial's push. Uh, to, for Astro Authority's push, excuse me. There goes down the Tempest, so Grok could be a good candidate to receive this here. Recharge is available, but Bitey is eating a lot of damage right oh. now, and he's gonna fall. He wanted to be in the right spot, and unfortunately that spot was in the middle of danger. Shady Shades and Stolze try to combine, but they will not combine hey. for anything except a kill on the Cus Cutie and a death. Thanks to Vex, three to three, it all comes down to this last fight. There it is, three resiliences coming out for Astro Authority, Cus Cutie. Uh, not yet hitting the Resilience 3 mark. Also, notably, hasn't picked up the Cauterize 3 either, so not enough credits for that. Realizing it's 3-3, he's just gonna hop right into the Kronos. You wanna get, you can't, you don't have any more time to sit on credits. You have to spend them, you have to try and get some value for them. Uh, but the items are about equal here, um, as it is now the late game, but ultimate charges is where we're gonna see most of the differences here. Two ultimates very far off for Astro Authority. Three ready to go, the King Bomb, the Dome Shield, and the Hex of Fire, but Nile Esports have everything at their disposal to win this team fight. But will the Torvald Hyper Beam, especially with the Grok Totemic Ward legendary choice, be effective here? That's the key. That was the game changer last time. Will it matter here? It seems that we have Vex already getting close to the point. Wi-Fi still controlling it with Denial, having the type of poke from Drogos that's gonna keep them away for now. But with the Dragon Punch there, a Hyper Beam coming through, it's not gonna get any value. This could be bad with Cus Cutie on Stolze's tail. Astro Authority's in a really good spot right now. Three for two in favor of them. Last two members of Denial fighting for their lives under this Shell Shield, but that safe haven has now expired. They're gonna have to seed themselves out. Cus Cutie has a decent angle here to chase them down, but doesn't want to get too aggro, just kidding. He pushes the gas pedal and whips oh. on his accursed arm. So Denial with one more ultimate now down for Astro Authority have the opportunity they need to get back in this. Oh, they have the Dragon Punch and the Evil Mojo. They got to get on the point though. That's so important. There it is. Turn it into chicken. Stolze gets one. Evil Eye goes down. A nice hook on the cuss. He will stay alive. Oh my God. Dosips and Vex 30 find Stolze in Wi-Fi. Cuss still in this fight at such low health despite whipping his ultimate. 96% for Astro Authority, 99. And they will claim game number two on Frog Isle in the craziest of circumstances. That is gonna have, that's gonna hurt. You know, look at that Totemic War there, keeping everyone from Astro Authority so safe so often in that game. Wardoom ends on a 16 streak for his barrack as well. Hard to kill. It feels like that's the theme for Wardoom when he's playing today. He's just on these incredibly long streaks. They're not focusing him down enough. And maybe the guy's just playing too good to die. He's just taking advantage of the perfect timing. He's often the team member you'll see who has the least amount of deaths on Astral Authority, despite despite playing the most aggressively. And again, Wardoom does impress with only five deaths here, 27 eliminations, the highest out of anyone in the game and on his team by a while. 108,000 healing. Uh, is, a, is a cool story to tell for a Grok as well. Normally we just see very, very yeah. low healing numbers, but running Totemic Ward against Makoa, as well as just forcing your team to clump and group up, and Astro Authority are so good at communicating when it's time to heal, when it's time to group up, and it makes them so difficult to bring down. It's negating the knockback, the split up from the Fire Spit, as yep. well as the Dredge Anchor, as well as potentially going huge at negating an Evil Mojo or a Hyper Beam. Didn't really see a whole lot of that, but just having that threat ever present uh, is gonna make it. We only saw a couple of evil mojos come out, period, that game. And part of that is there is just very few windows where it's gonna be effective. Yeah, and that's why I would like to maybe see more of the solo ults for that. You know, a lot of them had the resilience sure. just picked up. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if you're gonna get all of them. You're not gonna get a team wipe at that point. Too many people to shoot at in too little of amount of time. But you can maybe get Cuss. You can maybe get Wardoom, who's on a 16 streak. Even though he put his dome shield yeah. on, it goes through shields. Kill him. And that could change the game for you. Serpent Beat's gonna be game number three. Astro Authority could take first place once again and put themselves in a really good spot to qualify for the round robin with two back-to-back -back first place finishes. Let's see what they like to draft here. It's been all over the place today between these two teams. And Serpent Beach, one of the most wide open maps with a lot of mobility being 
uh, definitely highly prioritized here. Certainly, certainly. Serpent Beach, Serpent Beach is a you know a map we see very successful for a lot of flankers like Buck. We see Eevee come in here every time, you know, here and there. And also we see Knessa. The big story last round, we were watching Corvinor play the Knessa against Cus Cutie. And it, actually, Astral Authority will take the Androxus yet again. Feeling right. like Cus Cutie's just playing one champion. It feels like he's still on his grind of Masters here. Yeah. He knows this doesn't count for experience, right? He's back on it. He's back on it. He's still <laughs> looking for it. Torvald and Ruckus. Again, selections for Nile Esports. Astral Authority will have to put Evil Eye on something different, I think, for what feels like the first or second time today. Maybe he'll be back on the Drogos. Serpent Beach was the only other time he played anything other than Ruckus at this point uh, in the day. So, Rock coming back to Denial as well. So, these teams kind of going with the same strategy here, it feels yeah. like. Just sort of trading, taking turns with the first pick. He's a fantastic Drogos as well, so it wouldn't be a bad thing uh, for him to be on there. The Barrack worked really well for Wardroom last game. Again, we mentioned the 16th streak he was on. Now, Ying coming in here. Good spot for Serpent Beach. There's a lot of areas she can hide the clone, still have access to the point. Tyro was something we saw in Denial. Uh, mm. Actually, and a lot of other teams kind of favor the first blood pick, the extra life steal, controlling those upper rafters, and also having the Molotov for the point control. Yeah, and this is also going to dissuade the Drogo's pickup from Astral Authority. They still could go for it, but look like it's going to be the case. They're hovering the victor. They're going to lock it in as well. Uh, as there are zero flankers on Denial to try and contest that. It's going to be an interesting match. I like the way Tyra can apply pressure to the Ying, the Barrack, the sh you know, the clones, and the sh everything on the point that Molotov is going to really help with. To me, I think it's going to depend on the positioning. Does she go for the first blood or the mercy kill here for just the burst killing? I think the victor, the victor, if it's uncontested, is just going to be too much. Stole, or uh, Shady Shades is going to have to find his way back there to try and shut down Dose. Up. Spidey will be on his aerial assault. Brock is with the Cronus again. Maybe he'll be the flanker this time around. That's right. For denial. Field study for Whipples. For Vault Exaction for Shady Shades. Cassie, first blood for Stolzy's wow. Tyra. And a Totemic Ward for Arise Grok. And Wardoom will find himself on Architectonics Barrack. Dosips on Gunnery Victor. Cus Cutie playing the Dark uh, Stalker Legendary for the God Slayer. Evil Eye, Accelerant Bomb King for the extra mobility. And Vex 30 running Focusing Lens Ying for the extra damage. Stolzy already starting with Cauterize. Only one Cauterize and only the potential for two on the side of Astral. So this is looking good for a first blood Tyra. Long range firebomb is going to come out, connect, doing a lot of damage to Wardoom right out of the gate. But a nicely placed totem is going to be a nice little haven for anyone from Denial that needs to top off. Shady Shades does find first blood onto Cus Cutie, marked out up on the high ground. Dosips going to be taking increased damage from Dosips. Now, with Tyra in this fight, it does mean uh, that Denial is going to have an opportunity to have the vision on her target. And that, that vision can be very, very important in just swaying the first part of a team fight, maybe swaying the first part of a 1v1 and allowing this type of snowball to happen when somebody gets unexpectedly low and has to run and retreat into a corner. So far, 57% for Denial Esports, a minute and 40 seconds gone by. Things are looking good for the underdogs. Oh, Tyra's doing a ton of damage to all these high ground targets. Evil Eyes Bomb King just cannot compete. He has to get out, heal up right now. Wardoom, the solo tank here for Astro Authority is going to be very hard pressed to work his way back on on time. Doesn't have any turrets available to him. It's a very interesting stagger, but they do get the overtime started as well as having a low targets here. Two kills already going the way of Astro. Wow, big kills though here coming from Shady Shades. Arai finds two in this battle. Double kill for Shady Shades. Stolze picks up one. A rampage for both of the damage dealers. The carries, Stolze and Shady Shades on five and seven apiece, make it 12 together. And they are looking good here with a push, heading into two minutes and 12 seconds left on it. The first to reach their ultimates by a decent amount. Victor keeping up, uh, but none dropped just yet. Cus Cutie far off the mark. He, last time on Serpent Beach, was by far and away the first to reach his ultimate. There's the barrage coming out from Astro Authority. Zero kills off the back of it. But that's a good counter for Tyra in general. She's got no movement skills, so her damage is there. She also doesn't have the upper ground advantage, but look at this, a bubble onto the Stolze, going into the crossfire, not CC immune, so a Grumpy Bomb could end her days. And in fact, this time it would be Vex with the focusing lens, Ying taking her down, but that's a lot of damage when those two combine. Rolling back right now, a lot of ultimates coming out from Astro Authority, just try to quell this momentum from Denial Esports. One more shot onto the Torval. will do it. Can he find it? He will. But he's going to trade his life out for a Wardoom actually getting set up on the high ground here. Drops the barricade as well to negate the firebomb. 
from ever even reaching them. I don't mind that. It's a lot harder for Tyra to throw the firebomb up on top. And he can leave a turret up there and also drop down to the bottom and have just kind of damage coming from both layers of the fight, which can be very hard for somebody on the enemy team to figure out where they want to shoot and when they want to shoot there. Shady Shades on the left-hand side, Navuli holding down this upper right corner. He's got the mobility, but so does Bidey on that Ruckus, just ready to use his advances at a moment's notice. 56 seconds remain. Oh, so boy. The clock is starting to tick down. You've never seen a Ruckus up there before. He's the <laughs> only one with the mobility to get up on this high ground, but he will lose it, dropping down to try and just shoot through these turrets, and it's costing him a lot of his HP. Dosips finds a rise as well, so no healing. Poor Denial to try and push this one through. It's just a lot of health those turrets have. You know, they can get up to 700 extra health in terms of cards, and it just it makes it so hard to actually burn through them quickly, even for a Ruckus, who's got some of the most uh, effective DPS when just standing still and shooting something. So uh, nothing to be scoffed at there. The turret's doing work. Evil Eye on an eight streak. They've got to take this Bomb King down. 15 seconds left to go on this push. Not a whole lot of flank pressure, though, on the side of Denial. All they've got is a Cassie to maybe send on a hope and a prayer to the back line to try and pick off somebody. But Arai goes down early again. Stolze falls as well. A lot of frag potential's already gone off the board for Denial. Gus Cutie gets two. Dosips gets two. It looks like Astral Authority are going to hold this one pretty convincingly, and Denali Esports will have to try, try again at the second round. As this one is over, it is 1-1, all squared away. Now, as these items come through in round number two, Wi-Fi will go with the pretty early resilience, uh, actually getting that to the level two mark, just trying to negate things like the King Bomb stun, as well as maybe even being poppy bombed out of position. As Torvald has no mobility, he can't, he can get juggled around uh, a fair bit if he's not careful. Wrecker 2 is coming online, so that's going to be a pretty big dampener to what this Torvald was able to do in the previous round. Still trying to get that Hyper Beam charged up and ready to go, sitting at 96%. Good look for a kill here as no resiliences have yet been picked up, and yet another game without Maldamba. Yeah, they just need to find a bit more of a poke scenario. They're really good when they're ready to engage head on with Astral, but they haven't been able to find that damage from afar or when trying to move forward on that push. And everyone on Astral is on a streak here. Shady Shades, good damage from afar. And Ying healing him right back up. Great stuff there uh, by the healer on Astral. Evil Eye finding a lot of poke here as well. And Totemic Ward is now down. First Blood goes the way of Astral Authority and with the King Bomb at their disposal, eating oh. a lot of damage, but the Mist Grenade Launcher is actually going to be what saves the life of Cus Cutie. Evil Eye with a double kill finds Stolze and Bitey here now on the back foot. Denial have to give this one up, but not before they find themselves 42% on the point. That is important though, you know, knowing that they've got maybe 42, they can come back here and still convincingly with one big team fight win, change the tide of this fight, maybe get themselves in the lead yet again. Uh, Gus Cutie just trying to stall that as much as possible, almost runs into the wall. Nether steps away here and Dosips will retreat. 72 now on the point objective for Astral Authority. Four ultimates available to try and keep this team fight rolling. There comes the King Bomb around the corner. Won't find any sort of stun, but the damage is gonna be enough. Astral Authority find the payload despite the Totemic Ward negating the CC from Dosip's King Bomb. So much trading out for Denial. No one's finding picks consistently. No one's getting on streaks. The only moments we saw that was after the first round with Stolze and Shady Shades on the Cassie and Tyra. Uh, but Evil Eye, Cuss Cutie, Ward Doom, Dosip's there. That's the Cret 1v1 right there. They are the ones really here who are, are really consistently playing at a high level in this game. Victor just continue to put damage through. And this is the issue that we talked about in the draft. Maybe coming through for Denial. They don't have a flanker. So oh. now Dosef's on a 16 streak as he finds Stolze with a well-placed grenade up onto the high ground. If he would have banked that off of the I was I was wanting for that. I was looking for that, too. I, I was mean, hoping. That would have made me just get a little excited here. And I uh, shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff in the studio. You know, it's important to know Dosef's here on an 18 streak with Victor is somebody that, again, feels like an afterthought until all of that damage is coming at you. They're dealing with Cus Cutie playing so aggressively. They're dealing with all of the evil eye, you know, coming in through with this Bomb King play. Not on a streak yet, but still zoning out so well. Oh, Bidey will find a double kill for himself. And Vex30 giving everybody a little bit of a motion sickness. Is here. he going to back cap this? Oh, my God. Because they didn't see where he went. No way he just got that off. That is, I mean, for me, Vex30 just just played a pivotal part he, in this tournament right there. Did he just, did he, he try to do that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
You got to give him credit for that. You got to give him credit for that. It might have tried to get away first, but then he realized, hey, if I stay here, they're not even, I'm behind everyone. And uh, wow. no heads up play by Denali Esports. So that's what a Ying can do if you're not careful. And if you are a master class Ying, you can pull those plays off and really change the game. 3-1, game that, point now for Astral. That hurts. Does activate the comeback mechanic now for Denials. They are down two points, so they could get this payload. They find one small win, and that's what they've been doing. They've been bullying their way onto the payload because they do have two frontliners. So they've just been hanging out there. What was 40% in the previous round is going to be closer to 60 or 70% in this round. This left-hand side did not go well for Shady Shades again. Uh, they need to change something. He's got to find an answer here. They've got to get some kills, and that is meaning Wardoom needs to die. 18th streak again! Somebody finish off this tank. He has been dominant for Astral Authority, and Denial are not going anywhere unless they can find an answer for this fair. Pyro pushing up onto the high ground. Firebomb will come down. Crossfire is ready to go. The gas pedal is going to be stomped, but there is nothing for Stolzy to shoot at here. Only 1,000 HP left. Bitey finds a double kill on the front side of this fight, but Wardoom answers back with a double kill of his own and maintains control of the point. Slams down the dome shield. 20 streak, 21 for Wardoom. Unbelievable stuff there. Dosips finds Stolzy yet again with a grenade as he's trying to retreat. Both of these players don't really have much mobility in their kits, but uh, Tyra really has none. Victor at least can hustle and increase his speed as a sprint. But really right now, Astro Authority in control. Denial Esports yet to kill Wardoom. 22 streak for him. And here's the King Bomb. Evil Eye trying to shut down this aggressiveness once and for all. Doesn't even need the stun. Just so much damage from Evil Eye. It's going to be enough to finish it through. Bitey just bounces up into the air, trying to do what he can, trying to stall for as long as possible. But the trickle state seems to have begun here for Denial. The, what could be the final overtime here? Stolze doesn't have the mobility to get in there. And Astral Authority going to take Game number three, the set and the tournament for this week. My favorite Bomb King mode is, is when he's like the this. Ah, because ah. he, he takes so long, right? It's kind of very comical. Because the to kick me. is up, yeah. and it takes a while to be good. Then it's good. Oh, it's great. I love it. It's so exciting what to about see. Grok, uh, oh, Grok's and then, and then Grok, I'm Grok glad the camera went down. away from you when that <laughs> happened, because I don't think that was PG 13. But you know what? This was also maybe not PG 13. This was this is rated mature here. Mature play coming out from these teams and they've played against each other a lot it's kind of like d69 versus 50 shades of snake they have a meta of their own right now denial is falling back into the same old patterns of not really being able to trump astral authority's successes here in the realm but it did show a couple of moments of i think excitement for me the cool for them. thing here is that europe and na uh have always had slightly different picks slightly different metas but now they are diverted wildly apart from each other. Yeah. In Europe, it was all first pick Makoa yesterday. It's very cut, dry, yeah. uh, textbook drafts coming out from Europe. But this is just not the case. We're seeing Grok almost every game. We're seeing Torvald almost every game. Ruckus, Andro first pick uh, in North America. Man, you got to ask yourself, okay, maybe we're playing for next patch and for the good of our team overall, which I like that idea. Uh, but... Did they miss out not taking Makoa in this game? Grabbing the Torvald, grabbing the Ruckus. No one's playing Makoa here. Maybe that is a little bit of an overreaction uh, in my eyes to leaving pretty much the best tank on the table. And Astral Authority will take all of the points, all of the goodies, and head on Way back home. 200 points. And Denial finds himself tied for second here yeah. with Impact. They, the, the story here is that Astro Authority way out in front. It's going to be second, third, and fourth place that are very tightly contested for. Second is tied for right now, headed into week three. And the rest of the pack is within 10 to 20 points uh, of those second, third, and fourth place spots. So a lot still left to be decided in North America. There's so much action happening in the Paladins esports scene. If you're just tuning in or if you're a long time watcher, make sure you follow all the channels where we're talking about this stuff. Uh, we do podcasts on that. We're going to be starting back up again. A lot of videos recapping some of the action. Make sure you give a follow to Paladins Pro on Twitter as well so you can keep up with the news and some of the updates for that. We've got esports.paladinsgame.com where okay. you can see all of the news articles about Paladins esports there's so many good things happening uh again thank you all for joining us my name's been evan rayner rain day this is nick Keo, high res pretty hair that's all from us here at alpharetta studios we'll see you back next week for week number three here of the open summer premiere qualifiers and as always remember to never give up never stop gaming and we'll see you all in the realm